So in the process of designing structures, you're going to come across lateral forces. And these forces are due to earthquakes and, and wind and that sort of thing. And a lot of times they get lumped at the top of a frame because of a diaphragm or the way that the, the load gets distributed to the frame. Right. So in this question, what we're given is this is an FE style question where you're asked to find the maximum moment in this structure due to the applied loads. Right. And anytime we get a, a problem like this, that's, you know, statics kind of structures problem. I like to draw my free body diagrams. So let's draw those in and that looks something like this okay and the next thing that you want to do is just go ahead and start solving for uh, your your reactions where you can so let's let's go ahead and do that we're gonna just take some of the moments about point a that's gonna equal zero so when we do that you know the only things that cause a moment about point a really are this 20 kilonewtons and B Y they don't pass through point a everything else passes right through point a and doesn't cause a moment so let's let's write those in and it looks like this so B Y times five meters you know minus 20 kilonewtons times six meters equals zero. And when we solve this, we're gonna get by equals 20 times six is 120 divided by five. That's gonna be 24 kilonewtons. Okay, then we can go right to some of the force in the y direction equals zero and we're good. So some of the force in the y, we get ay plus by equals zero. They're the only two vertical forces, right? So they have to equal each other, except what we notice is ay really has to be like negative by, right? Because um, one has to go up, one has to go down for this thing to balance. And, and you can kind of picture that, right? If you're trying to rotate this about point B because of this 20, right? AY really needs to keep pulling it down. So AY is going to be minus 24 kilonewtons. Okay, and then our last equation, some of the force in the X direction equals zero. And we get, you know, 20 kilonewtons minus AX minus BX equals zero. And that's where we run into a problem, right? Because AX and BX are both unknown. Now we could make an assumption and say, well, AX has to equal BX, okay? And, and I guess, is that a good assumption? I don't know, pause the video for a second, think about it. Okay, so did you think about it? I mean, is that a good assumption? Should AX equal BX? If so, why? Well, one reason you might say is because it's symmetric, right? I mean, that's just symmetry it makes it easy to do. And, and honestly, it's not a bad answer. And if you want to just run with that, you could run with that. But then another another way to look at it is to look at the displaced shape. And that's kind of what I want to do next. So when we look at the displaced shape of the structure, we know a couple things. One, we know that it's not going to move at points A and B. In other words, it's not going to translate. It will be allowed to rotate because a pin does not resist rotation. So the other thing we know is this 20 kilonewtons wants to push the structure to the right, right? So the structure wants to come to the right. Well, if that's the case, what we kind of know is that it's not going to move here. It is going to move here. It's allowed to rotate down at point A. So what this is going to do is it's going to have some sort of curve that connects back in, okay? And that's going to be the same for both A and B. Okay, then the next question is, well, what happens in between? Well, to, to take a look at that, what I want to do is I want to say, well, what we know about this curve is we have compression on one side, tension on the other, right? So compression and tension, which defines kind of a positive or negative moment. So what's going to happen in between? Well, in between, what we know is we want to keep this compression and tension, and this compression is going to kind of come like this. Tension is going to stay on the outside here. So compression on this side, compression on this side, tension, tension. And in between, they're going to meet. So when we come in between, we're going to have some meeting point here where the curvature actually changes. And that's a big deal because when we look at moment, and maybe you've seen this before, a positive moment is generally one that has tension on the bottom, compression on the top. A negative moment normally it has tension on the top, compression on the bottom. So what you can see here is we go from essentially, you know, one type of moment where we have compression on the top, tension on the bottom, to, to switching, right? Where we have tension on the top and compression on the bottom. And if we draw in a local set of, you know, axes here, what does this look? Look like well this means our top and bottom are also going to change in terms of uh, on you know for member AC the top you know is here in you know member CD the top is here member DB right what we're doing still is we're having the top always consistently on the outside of this thing okay so that kind of defines the negative and positive moment but what we see here is there's a change between uh, essentially negative and positive moment, right? So especially on the top, you can see it where it goes from compression to tension, the tension to compression. So why do we care? Good question. We care because when you go from positive to negative, what's in between? 
Well, what's in between is zero. So this is a point of zero moment, right? Point of zero moment. And why is that a big deal? Because when you have a point of zero moment, that should remind you of something. That should remind you of a pin. And when you when you have this point here, we can essentially come down to our other structure and assume that there's a pin here. And I'm gonna call this point E, and this is our assumed pin. And when that, once that gets put in, we can go and solve directly for AX. This becomes a determinate structure. So we're using an approximate method to make this something that we can actually analyze and solve. So let's draw another free body diagram on the left-hand side. And once that's free, that free body diagram is drawn, we know that we're gonna have some you know, force here, that's EY. We're gonna have some force here that's EX, and the cool thing is, we don't really care so much about those things as we do care about that there is no moment here, right? This is an assumed pin. We know that the moment cha changes from you know, a positive moment to a negative moment. There's no moment here. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to take the sum of the moments about point E equal to zero and solve this directly. So now what we know is the only things that cause moment about point E are AX and AY, okay? So that's pretty cool because what that does is it allows us to write that equation and solve it. So when we write this equation in, AX and AY are both causing rotation in the negative sense. So we'll write this in as minus AY times, well the distance here is going to be essentially from this point to this point. We, we figured that point E would be halfway in between you know, point C and D. So when we do that, AY times 2.5 meters, you know, plus, or I'm sorry, minus AX times six meters equals zero. Well, we end up with a minus 24 for AY, so it's minus minus 24 kilonewtons times 2.5 meters, you know, equals AX times six meters. And when we get the minus minus, that turns into a plus, and we end up with AX equals 10 kilonewtons. So you might be saying, hey, we, we assumed that these were gonna be the same in the beginning, and you know what, you were pretty right on. So that's not a bad assumption, and, and it actually works. So if that's where you started, and that's how you solve this problem, great. But the next question is, we weren't asked for the reactions, right? What we were asked for is what's the maximum moment, right? And we know that there's gonna be you know zero moment at point A, and we kind of assumed that there's gonna be zero moment at this assumed hinge point E. So where is the moment gonna be the greatest? Well, when you look at this, this ends up becoming kind of like two cantilever beams if you can picture, right? If you can picture this, right, there's, it's almost like you have a, a rigid support here and you have two cantilever beams, one pushing the, with one load pushing this way and one load pushing this way. So a good place to kind of look at the moment is to, to try and find the moment at this point C. So I'm gonna draw one more diagram and we will solve for that moment. And to be honest, you could have skipped this diagram right up front. You could have said, okay, we're just gonna assume AX is 10 and solve for the moment this way. So the last diagram looks like this, where what I did is I cut this thing at point C. Okay, and at point C when we cut it, we don't have an assumed pin, we don't have an assumed hinge, so we're, we're gonna have some CX, we're gonna have some you know, CY, and we're also going to have some moment at C, and actually, I'm gonna you know, leave it like this direction because if AX is rotating this way, MC is gonna wanna rotate it back the other way. But what we're left with essentially is one equation and one unknown. So now we can come and we can sum the moments about point C equals zero. And what we know is, well, the 20 kilonewtons, the CY, CX, they all pass right through point C. They're not gonna cause a moment about C. But this moment at C is going to cause a moment at C, and the only other thing here that will is AX. So the moment at C, you know, minus AX times six meters equals zero. So what do we get? We get the moment at C equals AX, which is 10 kilonewtons times six meters. Okay, and that is our answer. And when we come up here, we can select, you know, our answer C. C is always a good answer. But hey, that's kind of the the bigger picture of how you do this. In general, this type of a frame is called a portal frame. And one of the things they do not include in the FE is the general solution for a portal frame. I'm gonna write it down below. I'm gonna actually copy it in below for you so you can see it. But um, you know, if you have a portal frame, you can just go right ahead and apply the, the portal frame functions. But sometimes those don't show up 
on the, well, I don't think they show up in the FE reference handbook. They do show up in structural analysis textbooks and that sort of thing. But this type of problem, even if you don't have the portal frame, you know, formulas, you should be able to solve this. This kind of uses some basic fundamentals of where moment zero, how to solve it, how to make appropriate assumptions and how to get an answer. So if you got this answer when you started, good for you. Um, otherwise, let's, let's, let me put those um, extra, you know, the, the general case in down here. And, you know, hopefully this helps you as well. So what I've drawn in here is just the general case, right, for a pin supported portal frame. And this is the load that you have with, you know, load P, a height H, and a base L, right? And when we do this out, what we figure out is that these are the different reactions. We have pH over L, P over two, P over two, pH over L, right? And we can actually calculate those out. So when we do that out, what do we get? Well, pH over L, well, in this case, P was 20 kilonewtons, H was six meters, and L was five meters. So if we do that, you know, we essentially, 20, um, five goes into 24 times times six equals 24 kilonewtons, which, which, which mass is what was above, right? So this is a general case. It's generalized for any load P, any height H, and, and any length L, okay? Similarly, our horizontal reaction was P over two. And what's that? Well, it's 20 kilonewtons divided by two, so that's just 10 kilonewtons, just like what we found up above, okay? And then here we can look at the moment, and really the only other thing here is the moment, and that's pH over two, and what we get there is 20 kilonewtons times our height, which was six meters, divided by two, so two into 20 is 10, 10 times six is 60 kilonewton meters. Okay, so right away, like if you remember these formulas, that's great. What this does, it gives you the reactions, it gives you the maximum moment, and you know, this is a generalized case, right? Where we have any load P, any height H, any length L, you can immediately, just by applying these equations, find the general reactions and the maximum moment. So that's a, you know, that's a shortcut, but if you don't know it, um, you know, the, the stuff we did up above, it is a way to figure it out in the midst of a, of a test on the, in the heat of a battle. Um, one other thing to, to show here is when we look at this frame, the deflected shape, we're going to assume that these displacements are the same, okay? And what that does is when we assume that, it's a, it's a decent assumption, but that puts the pin in the middle. All right, so that's the general case. You know, feel free to use it. Copy this. You know, take a screenshot of this and put it in your notes. Copy it. Um, you know, if you want to put a tattoo on your chest. Um, is that legal? I don't know. But hey, if this helps, I'm you know I'm glad for it. But um, otherwise, you know, if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment and uh, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.